with Phoenix, and we talked about manufacturing virality on TikTok. How we both differ in Facebook ads, but ultimately seek simplicity to scale because we're part of a team and a collective and the relationship that you have as not only an advertiser, but a real person in the world and how those dollars make sense because it impacts food on the table and the livelihoods of real people. How to provide value and build relationships to create real change in a insecure, small dick energy dominated space that is digital marketing, especially with those that created success in a bull market by signing clients that don't need them, that are too scared to ask why and take offense when you challenge them. And stick around to the end so that you get to see her playbook on how she rose to a place of prominence in an industry that is set against her as a minority woman and how literally anybody else can do it because the honest truth is anybody can and yeah this was a blessing and an honor to chat with phoenix so that being said let's dive into it phoenix it's great to see you today why don't you tell everybody the story of how we met and then we can kind of dive into what we're going to chat about today it's great to see you too. I'm always happy to see you. But yeah, I met you under a giant neon uterus in Nashville, Tennessee for it's a guest event. Yeah. Well, actually, it was really funny because I didn't know if you were a part of the conference. 90% of the time, people don't realize I'm a part of any conference. They think I'm just like some random. And I kind of love that stealth mode. And I went under this cool neon uterus. It was like a feminism, you know, ode to feminism type of art, you know, I think like show going on and I was under it and my fiance is taking pictures of me and you come over and you're just, just giving me crap, like just laughing at me, whatever. And my instant reaction is always to like bite back. Yeah. So I, love I it. back at you a little bit and we just started talking. And after all of like the roughness in the beginning, which I love, we ended up becoming really cool friends. And there was like one specific event during that conference that we were just sitting there and talking about TikTok, organic TikTok, strategies with Facebook, campaign structures. And while we do differ in many ways, we're very similar in many ways. And I think that there's a huge appreciation of the minds and the hunger for the minds. And you have that. There's a very select few of people that have that. And I admire it. And I, I definitely go towards those people. So I very much, very much appreciate who you are in the space and what you bring to the table, the raw honesty. And you're also very open to new thoughts and ideas, which is rare, right? So yeah, that's how we met, man. And we're still yeah. here with some friends. <laughs> no, it was a beautiful thing. It was like, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I think it was like, yeah, your your boyfriend was, you, you were kind of like directing a photo shoot below this thing. And I was just like walking up, killing time. It was fun to just like kind of give some rangers, trainers some shit on some things. And I go with a speaker and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love the shift. The shift is always fun. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think it was a really interesting, like, to kind of go from that, you and your boyfriend clearly having your own little like inside joke stuff going on and what that looks like from the outside to... Now we're people talking about what we do that we're super nerdy about. And then oh, yeah. that like exchange of ideas where clearly we're both passionate about what we do and we don't necessarily agree on everything, which to your point, I think I thoroughly love because it means that, you know, we don't learn anything when somebody says, Oh yeah, you're right. Like, yeah. oh, okay, great. I don't like Awesome. Like, can't stand that. It's like yeah. stale bread. You're like, yeah, oh. exactly. Yeah. It's like, so the fact that when somebody's passionate about something and they're well informed and experienced about it, and then their ideas aren't the same as yours, one of the things I really loved about those conversations, I think we'll get into them in a second, is I can be very passionate about stuff and I'll come from a very like matter of fact. And I, I do try to come from understanding what's subjective and what's objective, at least from, from my perspective. And other people will come from their own and to be able to kind of stand on your ground, but hear the other person. Okay. And like, I think for what it's worth, we live in an industry, politely put, has a lot of alpha dudes, a small dick energy that cannot handle that type of conversation. What are you talking? I've never heard of this before. <laughs> That's so crazy as a female coming into the space. 
alpha male. What? Yeah. No. Yeah. So <laughs> things are changing I, though. Interestingly enough. I, and I love it. I love that it's changing because it's one thing to stand at your ground. It's another one to stand your ground, but also be able to hear somebody else. And I loved that. It was interesting. Like I saw the dichotomy out of your boyfriend. So I kind of entered with that same energy and you fired right back at a point where it's like, okay, we're going to be friends. Cause like we can <laughs> throw it and take it and then 100%. have drinks, which is amazing. Yeah. So yeah, we were talking about like TikTok stuff. And I mean, I think it was really interesting because you've been doing some stuff. Even I remember you were like, we were, we were at the, like the whiskey event or whatever, learning to make whiskey drinks. And you were real specifically there. I remember like you were talking about just your own personal brand and uh, just on your own account, you're like, I'm just going to kind of mess around with TikTok and like mildly go viral every now and again. And <laughs> just like on demand. And I thought that was so interesting because it's just a very different approach. And I'd love for you to kind of talk a bit more about just like how you've been doing that. Cause I think it's, you set a very great approach where so many people are coming from what they're trying to get done. And I feel like you are trying to approach it by what does TikTok want from me and how do I best use this? And I think when it comes to Facebook ads or a lot of other things in any partnership, if you can understand what your partner needs out of it and you can deliver that value, your partners are going to take care of you, whether it's in a personal relationship or evil international conglomerate, you know, internet based <laughs> mind control devices or, you know, whatever it is, whatever the latest conspiracy there is. But anyway, I love for you to kind of chat about what it is that you're doing there because it's, it is so interesting and it has changed the way that I look at it, which. Oh, cool. I loved. Oh, that makes me happy. Yeah. I mean, okay, look, you said it beautifully. It's a relationship, right? And here's what I think about networking too. And we were just talking about this before we hit record is like, there's pillars of authenticity. There's things that I truly believe in. And if, if I'm having a conversation with somebody and it's not interesting to me, I remove myself out of respect for that person and myself. Like, let's stop wasting each other's time. We just don't vibe and that's okay. But it's the same thing with when you're building content. And I believe that when I was doing Facebook ads, a little bit different though with Facebook is like, you can make an ad with a specific type of formula and it hits, like, you know that. And then there's a the media buying side and that's really exciting. And that's great. And my background is in brand too. So I see things a little bit differently. When I went on to TikTok was when the pandemic started happening. And I was like, I'm just going to screw around with this. Like, who cares? I don't like TikTok's a kid's app, which is everybody's assumption, but that has actually dramatically changed. And we have to think psychologically what's happened. You know, COVID hit. So all the adults went on to TikTok because their kids were on TikTok and now it's adult talk. So all the things that you want to talk about, adult humor, Vine moved over to TikTok. It's also an incredibly powerful search engine. There's so many things like if I want to find out the best, let's just say hair dye, I'm going to go on to TikTok and I have UGC built in, right? Yeah. People are bringing their own testimonials to the table without being paid. It's kind of this beautiful thing. So my whole thing first sparked when I did this TikTok one time, I was on FaceTime with my fiance, just talking about life. And I was like, this idea snaps in my head. And I really believe in this thing called the X factor. And I'm still trying to formulate what the right word for X factor is that isn't so lame, but there's something about someone who gets it. And there's something about someone who just doesn't get it. And I get off the phone. I hang up the phone with him. God bless him. He just deals with me. And I right away film a TikTok because I saw that my neighbor put lemons on my wall. And I thought, oh, that was nice. And I had one grapefruit and I was like, okay. So I film, I'm like, look how nice that was. My you know, neighbor gave us lemons during this pandemic at a weird time. I have one grapefruit. I don't really plant things, pull it off. And I'm like, all right, here you go. Hope you don't die. Hit a million views. And I'm like, what is this shit? This is so stupid. This is like dog shit content in yeah. comparison to like what you would think. So I was like, okay, this is interesting. So I created a series on that. And then, you know what everybody tells you on Instagram, consistency, 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 keep on the same trend, keep on the same, like keep talking about the same things and you'll be successful. And I was like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to try something else. So I'm an avid, you know, TikTok consumer. I'm constantly in TikTok abs absorbing information, hooks, things, because we have a marketing brain. So our brain works differently than the average Joe. So I'm like, okay, 
I know that the first two, three seconds are the most engaging. What can I do that has shock value? Let's test something. So I tested some TikToks without my face in them, with my face in them, got some hooks. Instantly, we went viral over like housekeeper talk. I was showing how my housekeeper does things and whatever. And I hit a really early time. So we created housekeeper talk. So all the housekeepers came out of nowhere. And it sparked because I said, my maid did this. But we live in a very PC world where yeah. if you say maid, you're bad. Well, hate to burst everyone's bubble. I grew up Chinese Iranian. So like, it's just a language barrier. There's no like offense here. Yeah. So in summation, like constantly started building TikToks of testing stuff, right? So I did one saying, you know, and then I tried it with actual brands and, and with products. So I did one about a popsicle, an alcoholic popsicle. Oh yeah. I remember that one. That one, that one killed me. You were like, it seemed like you, you had a rough night the day before and it crushed. It crushed. So here's the crazy part is I come out from the pool. I've got nasty hair. I come in in a bathing suit. It's not a hypersexualized bathing suit either. Keep not at all. Out. Not You're just a person. Right. Yeah. Coming out of right. the pool. Absolutely. But that's really key because what you're doing is you're disarming your audience. You're not making them feel like they have to check you out. And like, it's not a girl scrolling. I'm like, I don't want to look like that. Or I can't look like that. You, and, and to a guy, it maybe intrigues him. I come in here looking homeless and I'm like, all right. I take this out of the fridge. I show the popsicle. I'm like, and I'm lazy in the way I'm speaking. And I'm like, guys, I'm a, I just came in for another one. It's buttery soft. No one talks about ice cream that way. Sometimes Mm -hmm. they do with a popsicle. And then I just point out it's 6%. And I'm like, don't tell me that I waste money at Target because you're wrong. And I left. I didn't have to talk about all the value props. I didn't Mm -hmm. have to have the structure of what we do in terms of, you know, creative. I didn't have a CTA. I didn't have any of that. I just said what I said and I left. It crushed so hard, Charlie, like all the targets sold out. Like I didn't get a penny from this. This is like a pure case study. Is that stupid? Maybe, but like didn't get a penny from this. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. This is kind of cool. Yeah. And then the last one that we did was one with this like probiotic coconut yogurt. And Mm -hmm. and all I said as the hook was, you can only have two scoops of this. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, what do you mean? I can only have two scoops. And then boom, you got them. And then you're just like, cause good luck. And you're like, good luck. Right. And then you say something, I was like, it has like something like however, and you don't want to be too informed because if you're too informed, you you're selling, you don't want to come off like you're selling at all. And you're still curious and you're like, I don't know, this is good for me. So whatever. And it's literally that quick. It sold out. That company is producing three times what it was before. It was crazy. And then it created this frenzy of more people talking about the yogurt. Now they're in so many stores. I know I did that. It's not an ego play. You just know, especially when you're in marketing, you know that your input has output, right? Yeah, absolutely. yeah, I think that's what we were talking about. I, I don't know if I did the yogurt one just yet when we had met, but like. No, I don't think you had. I remember following it and then I saw you do the yogurt one and we had talked about it later because I was like, I can't seem to get this women's clothing business to work. And I showed it to you and like, oh, yeah, this is all you, you're you're not getting it. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Help me out. And then you then you did the yogurt one. And I was just like. Okay. okay. I think, I think, I don't think I quite get it, but at least see that that's the path. I got to go make some mistakes in that direction now. Well, we always think that people want to see what we want to see. And that is true, but like TikTok's a really interesting place. So I, and this is public knowledge now, I and my team run Mario Lopez's TikTok. So when Mario came to us originally, I was like, dude, you have like 40,000 followers. I shouldn't have more followers than you on TikTok. This is a joke. So what we do on Mario's is strictly three pillars. And I always advise people, what are your three pillars? Like his is family, food, faith. And sometimes he puts fitness in there as well. I'm like, okay, if that's the case, everything that we do is going to be geared towards those things. However, they're going to all be trends. Yeah. I'm going to invent anything new. Maybe every once in a while we'll invent something new. And it hits every time. And like the argument could be that it's Mario, but like at the same time, there's so many other celebrities out there just not. Sure. And and it was at 40,000 beforehand. So it's a great execute. It's a great use case of, 
okay, it's AC Slater, but you've 10X'd him by doing it differently. And right, but like, we made sure nothing was AC Slater, too. We oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. on purpose. So he has like 584,000 followers now. Yeah, I mean, my, yeah my, my, I guess my point is just like, beforehand, when somebody says, oh, it's just Mario Lopez, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, well, Mario Lopez was 40,000. Us yeah. doing it's like nearly 600. Like, that's a game changer. Huge, huge. Huge. I mean, that, huge. It opens up so many opportunities. But yeah, I love TikTok. I think it's really interesting. Like, Shaq said something to me and it was funny because we were just talking at, when we were filming recently and he was like TikTok's for your ego Phoenix and I was like well my ego's fed so I'm chilling and, and we were talking and he I realized he doesn't even have TikTok so he doesn't go on there because he doesn't want to consume and he had no idea that it actually had something there and I told him I was like look like the organic side hits and I have a very differing view about ads with with TikTok very different and that's the beauty of how we started speaking. Cause I was like, I will not spend money on TikTok until we hit organically, because then we know our niche and like, we can pick up that momentum. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. And, and I think it's just, that's such a big point. And I think we can use that maybe to pivot to some Facebook stuff and scaling campaigns. But I, I love the idea of finding what works organically and then amplifying it because at the end of the day, any ads, you're just paying to show it, the stuff to more people. And the idea of respecting your partner in any social media environment, their business, your partner's business objective. And this is something where I think Ashton Shanks and I very much disagree when we were talking is, you know, he says that we're not business partners. I'm not in business. We're not, we're not, you know. He's, he's trying to feed the money. And I think my goal in any social platform is to give the users of that platform an experience that they want to have. And that way, the engineering and product team of that platform end up becoming salespeople. And if you have a TikTok that hits, paying to amplify that, it's going to do a lot better for you than trying to pay to amplify stuff people have already told you they don't care about. Like, why do I you want to spend? Responsibility. Yeah. yeah, you have a response. I think you and I are completely aligned. I've had similar conversations with different media buyers and they're just like, if it hits, it hits. Why are you so woo-woo about this? And I'm like, yeah. because you have a responsibility to the public. It's the same thing with iOS 14, right? So like we talk about all the issues that have happened in Facebook and segueing there, right? And the conversation is content is king. Content is king. Okay, well, you can only say that so many times until you really believe it because- if I'm not bringing value to you, whether it be a product, whether it be an ad, like the days of ugly ass ads are over, right? I really believe that your consumer is smarter. You're building a relation. I love that you say this is a relationship. I love that yeah. you say it's a partnership because a hundred percent it is. And how dare you expect to take more than give? Yeah. A hundred percent. Like you have to give and hopefully you get back and just like in the real world, it's something where when you're authentic and less calculated and you give constantly, it's funny how you get, those are the situations where you actually end up getting so much more than you felt like you gave out because you also don't under, even under, it's very hard to appreciate the impact of what you give 100%. in the real world and on online. And yeah, like it, it's, so anyway, with, with that stuff, like, I'm curious how you're taking that mentality when you're getting into, when it comes to Facebook and it comes to paid media, amplifying the volume of your investment and leveraging that relationship and scaling up those campaigns. Because I think we have a slightly different way of viewing it. And I, I, I would love for people to see, like, how you're going about it, because, I mean, clearly it's working for you. Yeah. So let me just start off like with the obvious one is I don't scale without first party data. I think we agree on that one hundred percent. You use triple whale. I use ad beacon. I respect the guys at triple I actually just met Raba recently. It was kind of like funny. I will say this, like, let me just say this. I really love our industry. This is the first industry I've ever been in where we truly believe there's enough to eat for everyone. Like, yeah, and the well, I, I, would, I would say this, the good people feel that way. The people who think they're good, try to protect everything they have because they're not good enough to get more and well, they're not willing to give started. 
Did yeah. I ever tell you how my career started? Like in this? No, no, Dude. tell me. Oh my God. Okay. So it's exactly that concept. So if anyone's listening to this and they're like, I want to break through. Okay. Like, let me just tell you really quick. There are no secrets. There are only good media buyers. Like that's mm-hmm. literally what it comes down to. If you meet like a Charlie Tickner, if you meet like all these other guys or girls in the space or women in the space. But anyway, the reason why is 14.5 hit. Our entire team was gone. You know, my head media buyer, and I was a bait, I was a buck, right? And our head media buyer went on maternity leave. She hired some other guy. The guy was subpar to trash. Love the guy as a person, but like as a media buyer, my like, homie. And I was just digging and digging. The whole team left. I had 40 accounts on my plate and I'm new. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I went on to ad leaks and I was like, Hey guys. And I went on a Facebook live, very similar to you. You're not worried about being on camera. I'm the same way. I love to communicate. So I was like, Hey guys, what are you doing? I read this wall street journal article about AB testing Android versus Apple. I did this. This is my case study. This is what I'm seeing. What are you guys doing to pivot? Truly just going, what are you doing? Like help me and thousands of views, no comments. Oh, like what? Yeah. And nobody talked to me. And then Chad Wilton, who's the head of ad world and affiliate world hit me up. And he's like, Hey, can I talk to you? So we started talking and stuff. And he's like, I'm going to give you a wild card slot at ad world to speak online and let's see how it does. And then did it. And luckily and humbled, it hit like number two. So little things like that started picking up momentum. Right. But like, it all started with asking questions and it all started with like, understanding like holy crap there's so many people here that don't have the answer that pretend that they know the answer like you see on twitter i just joined twitter dude and i'm seeing everyone going i made fifty thousand dollars this month and i'm over here like doing beyonce quotes like yeah yeah wild wild but yeah like you just have to ask the right questions and push through and so to answer your question is i only do first party data Triple whale is very interesting to me. It didn't work for me, but I really respect it. And that's where you and I differed. We talked about it. So I created my own platform, which is AdBeacon. So that's the first step is being able to at least have clear data to look at in term clear, right? At least clearer data data to look at. And the next thing is I really believe in the heartbeat of a team. So uh, I completely transformed our team to not be media buyers in one segmented platform. I truly train them to think, omni-channel and uh, these types of tools help you. And I know you believe that. I 100% believe it. Yeah. I mean, I think, and I think there's so many folks that define their success on how they can make their myopic expertise look. And it's like, it's an ego based measurement of how much credit for everybody else's work. You can falsely, you know, assign yourself. And at the end of the day, there are sadly far, far too many people, in my opinion, that define their success as how much can I spend at X row as? And the honest truth is that has nothing to do with success in any way other than how you feel about yourself. And if that impacts your self-image or self-worth, based on looking at that number, I think that that's a sign of that's a sign that, you know, you're you're less mature in the industry and it's not necessarily a bad thing. People have to start someplace, but those omni-channel thinkers understand how can I be part of a team and how can I really use this tool properly? You're not someone with a hammer looking for nails. It's, you know, what can I do as a part of this aggregate in this collective of a bunch of efforts and exactly Sometimes the best thing you could possibly do is run Facebook, quote unquote, at a loss, because what you're doing is, you know, in some cases, that just means you're amplifying everybody else on the team. And if your job is to just provide more people who have a much higher profitability than you, far more opportunity, well, then you're making everybody's job easier and more effective and your work drives the success of so many others. And at the end of the day, I think it is tragically undervalued that it's not numbers on a sheet of paper. These are, this is roofs over people's heads, food in their belly and jobs and opportunity in the real world. And 
that's what we're giving people. And I think you and I are in an extreme minority in the fact yeah. that like it's actual real people that you're talking to and it's real money that's being driven. And it is the jobs, livelihoods, and dreams of folks that we'll never meet that are impacted by our work. A hundred percent. I have most of my clients text me. We're friends, right? Do mm-hmm. I want that all the time? No, but like, <laughs> whatever. And we're fully invested in this partnership. And I love that you keep coming back to partnership. Like Omnichannel, think of it like this. Omnichannel is a partnership with all the other channels. So exactly to your point, how many times have we killed off Facebook just to prove a point that traffic dramatically decreases and then the rest of the funnel fatigues yeah. or completely disintegrates? Like this is a clear... And that's why attribution tools are so powerful for media buyers and not for business owners because business owners want to see profit at the end of the day. They want to know that they move over their head, that they can feed their family and then they can make sure that all of their employees are fed as well. They are going to be scared of all the things that you're seeing and you're understanding in a different way. So, you know, to answer your question, there's that, there's that, there's also a lot of different media buying tactics. I don't really like to go into anymore. It's funny because when I first started speaking at these events, it was media buying tactics strategy, which I still, you know, love. However, that's kind of fizzled out because there is a cap at that. Like I already know, you know, back in the day when we did sneak campaigns, that doesn't apply anymore. That was really cool. But those things don't apply anymore, right? Rules, they don't apply unless you have a a first party tool that you trust to do these types of rules with first party data, in my opinion. You know, there's also like, you've got these bidding strategies and cost caps. Great. My style has been very hyper simplified. If anything, yours is more simplified than mine. I still believe- I would would agree, yeah. You still believe that one ad set and one ad hit and spend a million dollars. I've heard you say it a million times and you can show us. You know, I, I think like, we live in a world of acronyms and we're yeah. constantly going, this is the acronym. I'm like, I don't give a shit about the acronyms. Like at the end of the day, are we profitable? Yeah. And sometimes you you would disagree with me. You're like, I don't need to be profitable. Like the clients that I have, they need to be profitable, right? So sure, you have to speak the same language and that's my media buying. Like my media buying style is very different where you, you're able to pivot. You're able to shift. You as a media buyer are great. So you can adapt to any environment versus this is my strategy. This is the formula. There is no one formula for every single account. And if you think that that's the case, you're going to die in this world. That's what I've seen. Gotcha. Yeah. I think I, I saw this analogy yesterday and I loved it. I think there's a lot of folks who do the rain dance until it rains and then take credit for the rain happening. Yeah. If that makes sense. And because I posted this thing up that I would like to see less people share what's working right now when the reason they're successful is they landed clients that don't need them. And if they could instead share how to land great clients, then people would be far better off. And my point to all of that being that there are a lot of folks that have one tool and are just trying to apply it everywhere and where it hits, it works. And they say, well, some things work for some accounts, some things work for others. And I think that's because the way that they view it is only, this is how I do things. And if it works here, great. And my point to all of that being that there's specialization because you don't understand holistically what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the beauties of having the people that can go simple are the folks that have a more innate and intrinsic, almost intimate understanding of how things work. And I think, to put it politely, if you can solve the majority of problems with a simple statement, you're probably way, way more in tune with what's happening than having to give more caveats and excuses for why it only works some of the time. That's that's the way I'm going to try to make it polite and, and there's, brief. There's a beauty to simplicity. So like, yeah. you know, there's people that talk a lot. There's like so many people that talk a lot. And I like to just not talk for a very long time. And it's also like, we were talking about like female energy and female energy makes male energy nervous. And I love that. There's a power to it, which I will ride till I die. And, 
you know, you sit there and love it. And you sit there and you listen to these people speak and then you keep looking at them and you keep looking at them. And then when you do speak, what you say has impact. And <clears throat> that simplification of number one, knowing when to speak. And number two, there's also like when you do speak and it has impact is huge because, you know, I get criticized a lot, but it's always a joke. And I know that it's a strength is Phoenix, the way you describe things is like a five-year-old describing, or like you describe it to a five-year-old. I'm like, yeah, that's the point. I mean, you teach, I teach. There's a reason behind that because why do I need to sound so smart that you miss the point? I just need to get the point. And can I say that I think the ability to even speak like that is a skill and something I very much admire about you and some of the other people in the space because- It is something I've worked years on trying to be able to get halfway decent at making it five-year-old friendly. And I've been working hard at it. And I feel like I've cut maybe 20 years off the people that I'm talking to, but I'm not, I'm not nearly at the elementary school level. And it is, it is a skill that is invaluable. And I wish I had it in the way that other people do. And it is inspiring to see and a bit of a guidebook. So aside of everything else, I just want to, you know, thank you for continuing to be able to do that because it is something that I've tried to improve myself on. And I think a lot of people sadly don't appreciate what that is, but you do it so, so well. Thank you. Well, you know what? I like any compliment from you. I'll take. I know you don't throw them out like, willy-nilly right like I just said willy-nilly but you don't just throw them out casually but no look like I appreciate that you know it's it's a weird hard balance right because I believe like you if you're gonna talk shit back your shit we we always talk about this right and it's like hey look I'm gonna talk shit but I'm gonna back my shit but I'm gonna explain it to you very simply and I think you do that I think for me it's it's so interesting when I met you I met you I didn't meet what you know who you are in this space like when I was in Dubai, dude, you're going to laugh so hard. I was sitting at breakfast and this guy sits next to me in a tank top, board shorts, bald, whatever. And we're just talking. I knew he was a speaker. I didn't really think anything. And I'm so new to the space too. So it's kind of a nice place to be. We're talking about life, we're talking about holistic medicine. He leaves. And Jason's like, do you even know who that is? And I was like, nah. <laughs> He's like, that's Mark Joyner. And I'm like, don't know who that is. Keep telling. Yeah, and he's like, yeah. he invented, he invented the pixel. And I'm like, shit, that's insane. And it's the same thing with you. I met you, didn't know your reputation in the space, which is the disruptor, right? You believe in disrupting, which I actually admire, like culturally in the way that I was brought up. I love confrontation. I love that shit because it makes you better. It makes you grow. It, you know, the stagnation of life is like my biggest fear. So I admire those things. And then when I found out all the other things, like you were saying about Twitter and all that, I I was like, okay, cool, whatever. I know who Charlie is. I got to actually have a conversation with Charlie, got to know his brain, thought it was absolutely awesome. And we'll continue that friendship. And then again, like we go to the, the geek X event for like founders or female founders and everyone's talking about you and they're all positive. And I'm over here advocating going, yeah, he has passion. So those, those things echo in the space, like you're a rare gem, right? The, the conversations I have with people are always, how much money do you make? How can you make me more money? And do you have the answer? And like those conversations are, are so dried up for me. And then yeah. you have a refreshing conversation with the Charlie that goes, no, I don't agree with you. And I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go. Let's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I think it's great as, it I think I've ran into two other women that were at that event here in in, in Shop Talk in Vegas. And uh, I've heard multiple versions of a story of <laughs> one of my old mentors, Marina, who's a fucking gangster. Awesome. Like this woman, woman taught me so much. She's one of the most powerful people in the space. About some version of, we would yell at each other in a conference room with glass windows in the middle of the office for like three hours and then go to lunch. Yeah. And like, you want to get sushi? That's what she told me. And then you guys would get sushi. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. I got to get back to work. Yeah. Me too. All right. See you later. And that was it. And like, I think 
it was just it was just a beautiful thing just to keep seeing more and more and more of that and you know to 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 give credit where it's due i love that our friend Shaq is what brought that together and i love that marina is kind of really pursuing that female founder that's her whole new thing and the ability of just making that community stuff is is great but yeah no i i it it, it was humbling you texted me and like four other people did and yeah, no, it's just been, it's just been amazing. Um, but yeah, not to make too much of an aside about, about all of that, but yeah, it was, it was wild to see. I think the part that's striking to me is how much of an impact the idea of having direct passionate confrontation and then leaving the room as friends and moving forward. Because I feel like it echoes in politics. It echoes in every facet of life. Yeah, and and in our space, there's so many people that. I mean, we were talking about that, you know, small dick energy before, where like if they disagree with you and you go at them, there's no way we can be friends. I like, and I'm just like, why, bro? Like, we can disagree. We can both be successful. We can both have an opinion that we live and die on and then respect the other person. Just go about life. But not and, everyone believes that. Not everyone feels that. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that's unfortunate because it's, it's a way to close yourself off from the world and avoid being uncomfortable. And I think the avoidance of uncomfortability is one of the easiest ways to ensure that you don't grow. Yep. And, and that's a dangerous thing you could ever yeah. do to yourself. Like 100%. I firmly believe all you owe to this world is to be a good person and to stay hungry. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you might not be the best at what you do, but like at least try. Yeah. You know, at least try. And like I love that you said that. And look, I told you I'm Chinese, right? The way that we approach it, I grew up, my, my fiance and I are so different and I love that. And I come from a family where you sit down at a table and you talk about politics, religion, you talk about all of that and you fight at the table, you yell at the table and then you walk away and everything's changing. Like, yeah. I never even think twice about it. If anything, like it comes off insensitive now in this day and age to a lot of people. It's why I keep my, my circle small. Mm -hmm. Now my fiance's family, completely different. He's white, you know, which is great. I'm, you know, and he goes home, you never talk about politics, you never talk about religion, you never talk about those things. You are always on your P's and Q's. Their love language is, you know, a lot of time spent, not quality, a lot of time spent. Mine was not, you know, it's a very different world. Luckily, he's not like that. Like him and I, we, he came from sports. So he likes to be challenged like a coach, yeah. you know, and he's used to being yelled at and I'll yell at him and then he'll yell back. And it's great. It's a great, you know, ping pong, but you know, it's very rare to find people in the space that are able to take it and then be able to throw it back in a playful way and for you to walk away. And yeah. the whole point of it is just to say, I respect you in this space and that, I don't know, I, I wish there were more like that, but there's a reason why you're where you're at. And there's a reason why we're able to have this conversation and talk in the same circles is because that is a very rare trait. And, you know, I think to bring it full circle on that, that's why me giving you shit for you giving your boy shit underneath the neon ovaries ended up being a thing where we're now in this space about six, nine months later. And it was just because we're both two peas of that pod. And I love it. Yeah. I just want to touch on some stuff here before we go. And it's just really kind of maybe tapping into. I don't, I think maybe we can come back to another conversation about AI another time because I think that could be its own thing. But what I just wanted to touch on a little bit here was just, I think one of the things that I think you do well and I'm trying to get better at is the communication and simplicity. And one of the things that I really enjoy about your story is the openness and humility and the asking questions and how quickly you were able to establish a reputation and a skill set in this space. And I'm a big believer that success leaves clues. And obviously you can't just copy everybody else, but I would love if there's a way that you could in classic Phoenix simplicity, five-year-old fashion, 
sort of give a little bit for those that are trying to get in this space, because I genuinely believe there's absolutely no reason who's motivated that, that, that anybody can't generate independence for themselves and for their family by getting into what we do. Um, if your brain works like that and it can be scary and it can be off-putting because there's a lot of toxic energy, mm -hmm. but you're a great example of somebody that just waltzed right in and had your <laughs> own piece, but you made it work. I mean, I've been in the business for over 10 years and you, while you came in much later than that, and we're colleagues and I, i'd say you you are on bigger stages and doing bigger things than you know a lot of people that have been in the space for a very very long time and i think that that can be a path for the young bucks to use your terminology that want to get there and especially as a minority woman i think it's incredibly important because there's just way way too much insecure white dudes that got successful in a bull market because they landed clients that don't need them, that are way too insecure to be challenged, that define probably 80%, 90% of everybody talking. And so many of the conversations I've had as the last two or three conferences I've been at is how much everybody in the know knows those people are full of it and mock them behind closed doors. I'm not saying we should mock them now, but we can gave a path for other people to know what it looks like to be successful because you're a prime example of somebody that's done it. And I respect that. And I would love for somebody to be able else to be like, Oh, I could do that. I relate to Phoenix. I could be her. And yeah. that's amazing because we have, and one of the ways we keep it is to give it away. And I, I just, if you could share on that a little bit, I, I I think that would be the best way of leaving somebody with a gift at the end of all of this. Yeah, no, absolutely. Look, I firmly believe that I'm just a stepping stone for a lot of really sick women and men in the space that are going to far surpass me. You know, I don't have an ego. I have confidence. There's a big difference. And what I firmly believe, and if there's a way to simplify this, is everything else is noise drown out the noise and then get really good at something. And if you're not good at something, ask questions, but ask questions that matter. And then when you ask those questions and you don't agree with the answer, ask them why respectfully mm -hmm. and keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing until it makes sense to you. If it doesn't make sense to you, go find somebody else that explains it in a way that makes sense to you. That's what I did, right? My whole career started because Somebody was making mistakes. I fixed the mistakes. They weren't happy that I kept finding them. I was very respectful about it. And I said, hey, look, I saw these things. They weren't listening. They didn't want to change. Great. They bumped themselves out. You will always, always outwork somebody if you just keep your head down, keep the humility and ask the right questions. And then you sit in the space going, yeah, I know what I know, but I'm always willing to learn. Look, I could be making 1 billion a year and I'm still going to be the same way of going, I want to learn more. I want to learn more. It could literally even be the guy that's like bagging my groceries. And I sit there and go, how's your day? And he goes, good. And he'll say something so profound and like, holy shit, like you're never better than anybody else. And I think there's no formula of getting into the space other than being super authentic drowning out the noise of all the other people saying how much they, money they make. Cause that's anxiety. That's going to just seep into your brain. Look like I might not make the most and I might make the most, but it's not your business. All I'm concentrated on is making sure my clients are okay. And I'm in a good headspace, and I'm doing the very best I can to make sure they propel. And that's it. So I hope that helps. That's yeah. kind of my formula. No, I, I, I love it. And, and what I heard out of that for what it's worth is, Always have the humility and the willingness to ask why. And the people that are willing to give you that answer, stick with them. And the folks that can't give you an answer to that question have identified where they're at in the space too. And my only, the, the thing that I would say on top of that is that also means in a quid pro quo in the relationship that there's somebody else that's going to ask you why. And 
if you're on day three, there's somebody on day one that you can help. hundred percent. And uh, I, I love it. Like just that humility in the space of let's be defined in the impact we have on others, not in the numbers we can throw up on a screen because the end of the day, you're just a small piece in any cog and we're all just people trying to get by and make things happen, passionate about a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, yeah, I love it. Phoenix, I know you got to get going. I just really appreciate it. And let me leave it this, just if there's anything that you want to plug or way people can get in contact with you or any of that, just I'll let you get the last word in because I, yeah. would, um, <laughs> I don't want to do that. Dude, I'm on so many things now. It's like insane. I'm on Telegram, Twitter. Twitter's new to me. I just started Twitter this year and it's hard. You see me like... All I want to do is post the dumbest things, but I know it's still a business. Instagram and Facebook is the best way in terms of like getting to know me personality wise. LinkedIn is great. If you want to talk shop, like there's all these different channels for different purposes. And I'm inviting you to connect with me on any of them, depending on which one aligns with you. So again, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Telegram are probably your best bets. I love it. I'll put those, we'll put this up on YouTube. I'll make sure those links are down below and, and we'll get them up awesome. and so people can see it. All right. Well, Phoenix, thank you so you. much. It's been an honor. It's, I love just saying hi to you anyway. So it's it's been good to see you. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And I, I'm going to get together a little, a little community thing in April. So I'll let you know about what that is. And uh, we'll get to introduce, you know, we'll, we'll have, we'll get to see Marina and Laura Lynn and all sorts of other women and men in the space. And I think it'll be a beautiful thing, but I know you got to get going. I'll respect that. I, I got to pack up too and finally fly home after a week and maybe recover my voice. It'll be, it'll be, yeah. I get to sleep in my own bed tonight with my wife and some dogs and I can't wait. Say hi to wifey to me and the dogs. All right, will do. One day, but yeah.